afternoon, everyone. Thank you for uh, coming to the conference to uh, my exposition. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about something that you know, most of you already probably know, but I'm going to justify it uh, with a lot of different charts, with technical analysis. I wanted to take the advantage of dedicating these 20 minutes to gold in itself and to gold shares. Tomorrow I have another presentation. I'll be talking about resources, stocks, and other things, but today is going to be about gold. And it's also going to be about timing. You know, timing is so important. And most of you are investors, uh, you are traders, investors, whatever it is that you are, uh, ultimately uh, know the timing is everything. How many of you have ever had the right stock at the wrong time? Hopefully not many of you will, you know, I'm sure, uh, I'm sure several different, point, uh, different moments. It's just not the same thing. It's not the same thing if you go to your wife with a, with a, with a bouquet of flowers as a true romantic, one day completely sporadic, and it's a different thing if you go the next day after not showing up all night with the same bouquet of flowers. This timing is just not the same. It works similarly with investments and with uh, trading. So this, this uh, my first chart that I want to show you is a big picture chart of gold. Okay, the reason why it's important for me, regardless of you're a short-term trader or long-term investor, it's always important to determine what is the long-term trend. Where are we going with this? Is fear really a, 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 the catalyst of gold or is it something else? The, 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 the gentleman up here was just saying, I wish that, gold, that fear was not the driver of gold, that everybody just owned it. Well, actually, that is not so far away from the truth. Really, what has been the catalyst for gold uh, over decades, if not millennia, has been the uh, uh, inefficiencies uh, of uh, fiat currency, the erosion of value of these, of, these, uh, of these payment mechanisms over time have basically given gold a big boost. You see this chart is basically from the year 2000 or 2001. It has several different important things to look at. First of all, that big blue line that you see is that secular uptrend. This basically tells us that we are in a long-term secular bull market with gold, regardless of uh, if it's fear or if it's Iran or if it, whatever's moving the, the gold price today, there is a very clear uptrend, secular uptrend that began in the year 2000, in the early 2000s, okay? Then the other big important line I want you to see in this chart is that red line. Many people say, where do you get your moving averages? Well, this is a 23-month moving average that if you can actually see, it's a long-term moving average and it has a, captured the broad movements of gold pretty accurately since, you know, for the past 20 years and even longer than that. Uh, but I'm not going to bore you with uh, too much history. If you see, in the year 2000, 2001, breaking in 2002, gold broke above this 23-month uh, of May and it held above it until the 2011 peak. That was quite a rise. After that, gold went into a bear market, like many of you know, 2012, broke down below the 1500 level, and then you know, for the next few years, it was in a bear market. You, know, you can notice how gold was very well below that uh, moving average, the red line. The other very big important number and level here that I, want, that I wanted to uh, uh, bring uh, to your attention is that 1365 level. Again, I can't stress it enough, but for me, one of the most important macroeconomic uh, uh, events that happened last year was gold breaking out above this level. How can this be? This is a macroeconomic event, not only an occurrence, not only based on fear. Gold had been resisting below this level for six, seven years before it actually broke above it. This breakout was showed, showed uh, gold's uh, true strength behind the secular up move. It was getting to the point uh, where uh, it was going to either make or break it, and it actually broke above in, 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 in a very strong fashion. And if you actually see in the longer term basis, gold is very clear to that blue line, that secular uptrend. This actually means if you're a long term investor, even at today's prices, gold would still be you know, a good buy and hold over the next five years. It's, you're still getting it, I believe, you know, at, a, at, a, at a cheap level. Of course, me personally, and many of you might know, maybe not, uh, uh, I'm a trader uh, and investor, but you know, I like to keep my portfolio dynamic. Uh, I like to uh, increase exposure to gold when I feel it's going up, and I decrease my exposure to gold when I feel it's coming down. In this particular case, uh, actually in September, uh, we, had, we had made a, a suggestion that gold could be near an intermediate top, um, 
just a, a normal pullback or correction would have been likely. Uh, it actually started to decline until we actually start a couple of few different uh, uncertainties uh, start to break out. We saw geopolitical turmoil with the recent uh, issues in Iran specifically, you know, pushing the, the price of gold uh, up and keeping it lofty. Uh, fear traditionally has been uh, not a, a supply or not a demand side, not something that I can keep for a long period of time gold, uh, gold price up. Usually when the fear leaves, the price of gold falls. What has kept gold in a longer term uptrend has been, again, like what we were saying earlier, has been more of a monetary issue when, as it pertains to the erosion of, of, uh, of, of power. Having said that, of course, the past couple of weeks have seen gold rise from about 1450 to about 50, to 1600 intraday, actually, uh, based on fear. Very interesting to note that the recent uprise in gold has not broken above the, 50, the, the 1565 level, which is the September high, at least not meaningfully in, an, in a closing basis. This tells me that there is some short-term weakness still in gold. Again, this, is, this weakness that I'm talking about is only short-term for those of you who are traders looking to position and try to buy gold and you're not wanting to buy at current levels because you maybe are not just buying and holding for the long term. My view is, like I've been saying for the past seven minutes, is that gold is bullish long term and even if you are a value investor, just buy and hold it. We can compare gold's rise with a lot of different markets and we can see that it actually is not only, it, not only a, it, its, its move has not just been isolated, it's actually been pretty coordinated. We see in the left chart, you see uh, a, a ratio between a gold to U.S. Uh, long-term bonds. Usually, many times, you know, gold and bonds can, be, can tend to move with a safe haven demand together. But if you actually see, for the past 20 years, uh, gold has actually uh, outperformed bonds. And even though the past, since 2011, you know, during gold bear, bear, gold's bear market, bonds have outperformed uh, gold, you can see that right now, they're actually bottoming at a key level that has been key for the past almost 15 years. Although this doesn't tell me that this is a floor for gold, it tells me that it, the, the, the future will, mo will, will most likely favor gold over bonds. This is not something you should forget, this is something you should take in consideration when you're positioning or, or buying new positions in your portfolio. On the right hand side, we also see gold relative to oil also for the past maybe tw almost 20 years. You see that gold has outperformed crude oil. If you actually take a look at this chart and you break it down uh, into segments of time, actually whenever there has been a robust resource or there has been a strong economy, uh, it, it resources, crude oil, specifically in this chart, crude oil, has outperformed gold. And it has been during times of uncertainty that gold has outperformed crude, even though they both rise, even though gold has risen on a secular basis. Again, it's not all about fear. Because crude, many times what makes, a, a, because what, the different fears that make gold rise, many times also make crude rise. And you still see that the, the gold has outperformed crude. Another big, another big uh, uh, chart uh, that, that tells us about the secular move in gold, the secular up move in gold, are actually gold shares. You know, we all know, it's no secret that gold shares have been top, perf top performers this past year. They've outperformed pretty much every other asset class in the market. But what is very important, and the point that I want to make across with this chart is that when gold or precious metals tend to be strong, whenever they're, supposed to, whenever they're in a bull market, short term, intermediate, or even long term, okay, gold shares tend to outperform gold. This is very important because not, this has not always been the case. If you actually see a, a longer term, this chart that goes back to also almost 20 years, you can see that gold has grossly outperformed a gold shares with certain exceptions. You see, for example, in the 2008 bottom that actually a, a, from, from that bottom up to the 2011 highs, gold, a gold shares actually outperformed gold. And then, you know, back in 2015, when gold was actually, when gold bottomed at a secular level, we can actually see gold shares starting to rise, with the big exception that that downtrend since 2011, the ratio has actually broken to the upside. This tells us that gold shares are starting to, to outperform gold, but not only that, a, 
on a secular basis is conserving, is, is confirming gold's strength. Gold shares have been way stronger than anything else. Again, a true testament to, gold, to the secular up move in gold. We can see gold shares stronger than gold, and stronger than silver, stronger than platinum. Since this renewed rise from around the, uh, the August to September lows in 2018 for gold. You can also see that the, that the move in gold shares has not only been against gold, you can actually see that gold shares have really outperformed, grossly outperformed most other markets. Look at these, uh, these four charts are, four ratio, are three ratios. First is, a, is the on top left is the actual price of the HOI index, which is the gold bug index. And the rest of the charts you'll see that it's HOI um, relative to gold, relative to bonds, and relative to the S&P 500. You see that these ratios, when they rise, they're favoring the HOI. We've seen that for the past, since around May of last year, we have seen gold shares just blow everybody else out of the water. Now, we could see a little bit of a, of, 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 of a consolidation because the, up, the uprise has been so strong, but still, the, the strength in the rise tells us, is, it hints us towards a bigger move on a secular basis, more than just the move that we saw in the second half of the year. Another thing that I'm gonna, that I, that I, that is gonna be, should be bullish for gold, is basically the dollar. The dollar, since uh, the 2018 lows, has been rising. Interestingly, and not very common in the past, it actually rose with gold. Since about August in 2018 till today, gold and the US dollar have risen together. How is that possible? Everybody, you can talk to every other analyst in this, in this big room and everybody's gonna tell you that gold and the dollar move opposite. But they haven't in the past year and a half. They've actually moved together. The main, the main reason has been is that in certain in circumstances, the US dollar also acts as a safe haven. Maybe not in North America, maybe not in the US, but you know, every other country in the world sees the US dollar as still you know, uh, uh, the currency of choice, a haven. And not maybe every other country, but you know, a lot of them, especially emerging, emerging economies. You see, for example, about 80% of global transactions today are still done in US dollars. That's a big number. If uh, investors, uh, people outside of the US looking uh, for havens, they've used traditionally the dollar, and uh, the reason why the dollar has risen together with gold and bonds, US bonds, which are also a safe haven play for the past year and a half, has been exactly that, a safe haven play. The difference now being that even though gold is showing its secular strength by rising again to these uh, intermediate highs that we saw in September, uh, yeah, on fear, based on whatever, we have seen bonds not follow. We have seen the US dollar actually break below a, a key trend. This chart, which is from 2011, obviously shows a, an uptrend since that, since that time frame. But if you see the red line, which is a 65-week moving average, again, one of those other moving averages that nobody understands but us, but you know, that we actually see as a key trend identifier, you can see that the dollar has basically stayed, when it's been above it, it has, it has stayed above it through the majority of its uh, rises, and below it, it has signaled you know, downside pressure and a decline. Just recently, and only since August of 2018 has the dollar breaking, broken below this, up, this uh, uh, moving average. You can see it, obviously it's uh, since 2011, so you know, the break is still very mild, very soft. You can see in this chart, but the importance being that for 2020, the overall theme for the dollar is probably gonna be to the downside. That safe haven trade is probably gonna erode. We're probably gonna see a dollar, the dollar scale back a little bit uh, because of that, a little bit more, and that in itself is gonna be a catalyst for gold. Even though gold could suffer a little bit from this safe haven trade, it's going to benefit from, a, from the fall in the dollar. It's gonna revert back to this historical relationship that we all know it to have. Now, we were talking about timing. Again, timing, the ever so important timing. Where are we with gold? We know, we all know that gold at a secular level is gonna rise, or we think, at least we think we do. Um, and, you know, uh, but what's gonna happen in the short term? You know, should I buy now? 1560, you know, seems a little frothy for gold for me to be like buying in right now, especially if I'm a trader. What do I do? Well, the rise in gold since August of 2018 has been so strong, so strong, same with gold shares, that 
a, a stronger pullback, stronger than the one that we've seen, is very likely. And it's not something that should discourage you from believing in gold. It's actually something that you should take advantage to buy. If you're looking to buy more gold, increase your holdings, wait for this weakness. This next chart that, I'm, that, that I want to show you is actually a, one of my favorite charts. We could actually have just a whole presentation based on this chart. This chart is a, the uh, industrial metals a versus precious metals versus the industrial metals. Basically, this tells us how are precious metals doing against resource metals? What is more valuable relative to the other and at different points? This chart goes back also about 20 years. And you've seen that over the past 20 years, when you have precious metals as a whole and a resources as a whole, industrial metals as a whole, actually the resources and industrials have outperformed uh, the precious metals, which actually is uh, something saying that you know, the economy globally has actually grown in the past 20 years, okay? Because we grow if we use resources, we grow if we use these things. We don't necessarily grow if we're using safe haven assets or you know, instruments like gold. But the most important thing of this chart that I want to show you is that every single time the ratio has reached, it, has reached the, the top downtrend, that, it, that, that is basically, you can see it where it says precious metals too high compared to industrial metals, usually that has signaled a top, at least it has over the past 20 years re for this ratio which this basically means that for the foreseeable future, maybe for the next few months, again, not talking long term, not talking on a secular basis, but for the next few months, we are very likely to see resources outperform gold. Now, this could be that gold stays where it is while resources rise. It could also mean that gold falls. Uh, I am thinking personally that we're probably gonna see a bigger correction in gold. Uh, not that we're gonna see, again, it turning uh, bearish by any means, but it will allow me, in my personal opinion, to position myself even better. I don't know how many of you guys did over the past year and a half. Uh, we, we actually did a really well buying uh, near the lows and we were selling very near the actual high. Um, and I've had actually my positions in gold and, and gold shares reduced, um, waiting for a bigger pullback. Either the recent pullback to 1450 wasn't really that big of a pullback. I was expecting something below 1400. If we go back to that first chart that I showed you of gold secular, in the secular market, we actually see that that blue trend, that secular blue trend that is actually coinciding with the 23 month of May is exposing a very, very, very strong support level around 1350, okay? That 1350 is going to coincide, will coincide very similarly to that previous strong resistance of 1365. I think that this is a very legitimate target on the downside for a pullback in gold. One that I'm waiting to actually uh, position myself better by more. Now, the other thing, and lastly, is silver. What I have been buying over the past few months has been silver. Silver against gold has been, has been grossly undervalued. If you look at this chart, which is actually since 1968, we see that the silver ratio, which is the amount of ounces that you need to buy gold, the amount of ounces of silver you need to buy one ounce of gold, basically reached a historic high. The historic high was from 1990 and was basically about 100 to 1. That, we reached near to that level just a few months ago, around August, when it reached about 94 to 1. At that moment, regardless, we started buying silver. It's still, if you see the ratio, it's still a great buy. Better than gold. If you're looking to, if you don't want to be out of the precious metals move of the gold secular market, buy some silver right now. Wait for gold to pull back before buying more. Silver right now is probably the better trade. I'm leaving you with this uh, last chart of silver showing its steps. Uh, 1850 is key to break before it reaches its next resistance. And uh, you know, uh, good luck to you all and uh, thank you for coming and I hope to see you tomorrow.